Okay, welcome to another marathon video. Um, today's topic is kinematic thrust and constant acceleration. This is part of M1 A level mathematics. But if you um, are doing physics or any other uh, subject as well uh, at some other level, um, you will find this uh, informative and useful. Let's start. Question number one says the diagram shows the velocity time graph for a particular for a particle p which travels in a straight line. AB, where v meter per second is the velocity of p at time t. The graph uh, consists of five straight line segments. The particle starts from rest uh, when t equals to zero at a point x on the line between a and b and moves towards a. The particle comes to rest at a when t equals 2.5. So this is the point where you reach a. Given that the distance x a is Four meters find the greatest speed reached by the by p during this stage of the motion so i'm basically telling you that this portion where you have um sort of a negative um, area um uh, an area below the x-axis that's what the question is talking about so i'm going to say that part one is just part one is just area equals to half into base into let's call that v uh let's call that y so that i don't confuse that with the other v four equals to half into 2.5 into y so therefore y comes out to be eight divided by 2.5 3.2 i don't have answers here Okay, 3.2 uh, meter per second. In the second stage, P starts from rest at A when T equals to 2.5 and moves towards B. The distance AB is 48. So this entire trapezium that you see should be 48. Um, the particle takes 12 seconds to travel from A to B. That's a total of 12. For the first two seconds of this journey, uh, the p, p accelerates at 3, so the gradient here is 3. Reaching a velocity of v, find the value of v. I think that's simple. I can just use the gradient formula. I'm just going to use it here so that I can see it clearly. v minus 0 over 4.5 minus 2.5 equals to 3. v equals to 6. What's 6? Find the value of v, the value of t at which t starts to decelerate so they're calling this t i know that this entire area is <laughs> sorry 48 meters so i'm going to use the trapezium half into height into sum of parallel sides this side is 12 and the other one is t minus 4.5 okay cross multiply and try to solve 48 into 2 divided by 6 16 and 12 minus 4.5 is 7.5 plus t eight point five is equals to t the deceleration I think that's simple as well. Now that I have the points is 8.5. So 8.5 minus 14.5. And that's minus 1 meter per second squared. The relatively easy question, long but easy. Okay. A particle P is projected vertically upwards with speed 11. From a point on horizontal ground at the same time uh, at the same instant a particle <laughs> q is released um from rest at a point h meters above the ground okay so you have a distance for h meters um released from rest so this is a equals to minus 10 this is a equals to 10 P and Q hit the ground at the same time, um, hit the ground at the same time at the same instant when Q has speed V. 
Okay, at the same instant, a particle Q is released from rest at point H meters above the ground. P and Q hit the ground at the same instant when Q has a speed of V. It's reached the speed of V and they're both hitting the ground. Find the time after the projection at which P hits the ground. So I think that's simple. I just want S to be zero. So I'm going to say S equals to UT plus half AT square. Zero, 11T minus 5T squared, 30, 11 minus 5T. Either T equals to zero or 11 minus 5T equals to zero. T equals to 2.2. That was simple. Hence, find the values of h and v. So I know that they hit the ground at the same instant. So I'm going to say that u is zero is ten. I'm taking a total of ten sec, uh, two point two seconds. I want to find v and I want to find s. I think I'm going to find v first. U plus eighty. So zero plus ten times two point two. That's twenty two. S equals to u t plus half a t squared. Twenty four point two meters. I think that was simple as well. Let's go to the next question. It says a particle P is projected vertically upwards from a point on the ground with speed seventeen. Another particle Q is projected vertically upwards from the same point with the speed of 7. Particle Q is projected t seconds uh, later than particle P. Okay. t seconds later than. So capital T. I'm going to call this time x. And this as x minus t. Because this is the time traveled. Q will travel for a lesser amount of time than P does. Okay, given that the particles reach the ground at the same instant, so s equals to zero um, and s equals to zero. So they um, reach the ground at the same time. Okay, um, so let's first find out when this one reaches the ground. Okay, s equals to ut plus half at squared. Seventeen x plus half x squared. Seventeen x minus five x squared. X seventeen minus five x. Either x equals to zero or five x equals to seventeen equals to three point four. Let's apply the, that to the other one. And say that s equals to ut plus half a t squared 0, u is 7, t is 3.4 minus t half minus 10, 3.4 minus t squared. I could just find out. Uh, I will just call it a different variable and make it easier. Call it y. So 7y minus 5y squared. So y is just 7 minus 5y. That was becoming more complicated. I just found out two times. And what I'm going to do now is that um, 7 over 5 which is 1.4 what I'm going to say now is that it took this one 3.4 seconds and it took 1.4 seconds but they've reached at the same time which means that this one must have been launched um, two seconds later which is why there's a difference in the time traveled okay that's the correct answer as well at a certain instant, an instant when both P and Q are in motion, P is five meters above, high, P is five meters higher than Q. Find the magnitude and the direction of the velocity of each of the particles at that instant. I'm going to move this down so that I can show you the way I can clearly. Okay. 
so u for p u is 17 at a certain instance so i don't know what x is um so s p <coughs> is basically 5 plus s q that is what i know is 5 meters so equals to okay find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of each of the particles at that instant so i'm going to say that t is basically now x minus capital t or i've already found out capital t so x minus 2 uh, so i want to find out the velocity uh, of both these particles i want to say that s is ut is of course minus 10 for both ut plus half at squared so 5x squared 5 plus ut plus half at squared So I get 17x minus 5x squared equals to 5 plus 7x minus 14 minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 4, 5 plus 7x minus 14 minus 5x squared plus 20x minus 20. Again, 5x squared is cancelling out. I'm left with 17x um, minus 34 and minus 29 plus 27x. So 29 equals to 27x minus 17x. That's 10x. And x equals to 2.9. So it's after 2.9 seconds that they are 5 meters apart. I'm going to find v u plus a t u is 17 a is minus 10 2.9 um so that gives me v equals to minus 12 and v equals to u plus a and t is 2.9 minus 2 so v equals to 7 minus 9 which is minus 2 so they're both traveling in the opposite direction that they were initially which means that if they were initially going up now they are coming down and those are the velocities that you have so slightly tough question let's move on to the next one Two particles P and Q are projected vertically upwards from horizontal ground at the same time the speeds of projection of P and Q are 12 in this and the heights of P and Q above the ground P seconds after projection are HPM and HQM respectively. Each particle comes to rest on returning to the ground. Find the set of values of T for which the particles are traveling in the opposite direction. So the direction reverses when v equals to zero. So that is what I want to concentrate on. Uh, let's see u at the same instant. So u equals to 12 and u equals to 7. A equals to minus 10 and a equals to minus 10. So I want the direction to reverse. So I'm going to find out when v equals to zero. So v equals to u plus a t. <coughs> A equals to 1.2 v equals to u plus a t t equals to 0 0.7 so if this particle started reversing at 0 0.7 and it was going down this was still going up which means that between 0 0.7 and 0 1.2 the particles had different directions 
Why? Because one was traveling up and the other had already turned. Part 2. At any certain instant P and Q above the ground are 3 HP equals to 8 HQ. H is basically another name for displacement because I'm measuring the height from the ground, which was actually the displacement from the ground. And the velocities of P and Q at this instant. So 3 times S equals to UT plus half AT squared for this one as well. And UT plus half AT squared for this one as well. So 12t minus 5t squared, 70 minus 5t squared, 8060 minus 15t squared, 5060 minus 40t squared. Let's gather everything on one side. So that gives me 25t squared minus 20t, 8t common. So t equals to 0 or t equals to 4 over 5. Find the velocities of p and q at this instant. That's simple. v equals to u plus at. u plus at. u plus at. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, sprinter runs the race of 400 meters. His total time for running the race is 52 seconds. The diagram shows the velocity time graph for the motion of the sprinter. He starts from rest and accelerates uniformly to a speed of 8.2. In 6 seconds, um, the sprinter maintains a speed of 8.2 seconds per second. 436 seconds and then decelerates uniformly to a speed of v at the end of the race calculate the distance covered by the sprinter in the first 42 seconds of the race okay so i know the entire area has to be 400 but i'm just asking you this right now so half height into sum of parallel sides which is 42 plus 42 minus 6 is 36 I think that's too simple. 319.8 meters. Show that V equals to 7.84. So I can then say that this area should be 400 minus 319.8. And it's a trapezium um, lying down, or whatever way you want to call it. The height has to be 10, and the sum of parallel sides is v plus 8.25 v plus 41. Let's see if we get the correct answer. 7.84. Calculate the deceleration of the sprinter. I think that is also very simple. 8.2 minus 0 over 42 minus 52. Not 0, uh, 7.84, sorry. 7.84. Zero point zero three six meter per second squared. Okay, a car starts from rest, moves in a straight line with constant acceleration a for a distance of fifty meters. The car then travels with a constant velocity for five hundred meters for a period of twenty five seconds before decelerating to rest. The magnitude of this deceleration is two a. Guess the velocity time graph. So move some rest, the acceleration is A, the time is unknown, let's call that T, then for 25 seconds and 
this area is 500 meters before decelerating. The gradient is minus 2. Okay. Find the value of A. This is also for a distance of 50 meters. Okay. Um, I think this can be done with just areas. Let's try half. Uh, okay, that's simple. If this rectangle has an area of 500 and this length has to be 25 because I stayed constant for 25, I can use length into width to find out the height, uh, the width basically. So that should come out to be 20, which means that the speed is 20. I think that simplifies a lot of things for me. I can then say that I can find out this time and half into base into height should give me 50. Uh, so t is 5, and when t is 5, I can find out the gradient of this line. So 20 minus 0 over 5 minus 0, which is 4 meter per second squared. Okay, so this is 5. Is 30. Find the total time for which the car is in motion. If I find that out, I'm sure I can say that this is minus 8. This point has coordinates 30, 20. This has, let's say, x, 0. So 20 minus 0 over 30 minus x equals to minus 8. Minus 240 plus 8x 260 divided by 8 gives me 32.5. I think a reasonably easy question. Let's look at question number 7. It says the diagram shows the velocity time graphs for two particles P and Q which are moving in the same straight line the graph for P consists of four straight line segments the graph for Q consists of three straight line segments both particles start from the same initial position O on the line Q starts two seconds after P and both particles come to rest at time t equals to t the greatest velocity of Q is V find the displacement of P from O at time 10 Okay, P is traveling in the opposite direction, but they, um, they are in the same straight line but moving in the opposite direction. So half into height into sum of parallel sides, it's six, okay, four, 42 meters. Find the velocity of P at T equals to 12. Okay, then what is happening at 12? Okay, I can say that this is on the same straight line, which means it should have the same gradient. So this is going to be 12 comma, let's say Y. So Y minus zero over 12 minus 10 have the same gradient as 10 minus um, 10 comma 0 and 6 comma minus 6 so it should have 0 plus 6 over 10 minus 6 y over 2 6 over 4 y equals to 3 that the speed yes that is the correct speed given that the total distance moved by p during the t seconds of its motion is 49.5 find the value of t i think if i told you that first area which i found out was 10 
and if it's moved a total distance of oh, sorry that was in time that was 42 if it's moved just 7.5 more i can just say that area of triangle equals to 7.5 of base into height which i just found out so 15 divided by 3 gives me 5 he is there for 15. Given also that the acceleration of Q from T equals to 2 to T equals to 6 is 1.75. The gradient is 1.75. Find the value of V and hence find the distance between the two particles. When they both come to rest at t equals to t. Okay, I can find the speed by using the gradient formula again v minus 0 over 6 minus 2 equals to 1.75. That's 4 into 1.75. 7 equals to v. So I can then say that the distance that q has covered is half height into sum of parallel sides the parallel side or this t came out to be 15 so the parallel sides are 13 and 6 so it's 13 plus 6 into 7 divided by 2 66.5 okay Now, it's important to understand that the distance between the two particles when they both come to rest at T. Now, remember that P was traveling like that. We traveled 42 meters back and then 7.5 forward. And Q was always traveling like that and that was 66.5. So, I think the distance is then 42, point, 42 minus 7.5 first to find out what position is P at so it's a, still at a position of uh, from O it's at a position of 34.5 and 66.5 on the other side so 34.5 plus 66.5 gives me a 101 meters okay I will see you with more questions in the next video keep watching and make sure to like and subscribe at the end thank you